when jumping into these graphs of linear motion in kind of one dimension, students run into all kinds of problems when they have to transition between position time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. Now, I will make the assumption that you're you know, comfortable with slopes and that you do understand that the graphs themselves, so the position time graph just tells you where an object is. The velocity is actually the instantaneous velocity um, graph. And I'll put up a link up above there to instantaneous velocity just to remind you how to find it from graphs. And then finally, the acceleration is actually the instantaneous acceleration, so the acceleration at a point in time. And my goal in this particular video will be that I want to talk about, given a certain position time graph, what can happen, all the varieties of things that can happen in linear motion when you're just studying this in introductory physics, and then how do you transition from that position time graph into uh, instantaneous velocity time graph? And then from there, you know, how do you go into the acceleration time graph? So that's what it's all about in this particular video. Now, the key thing is it's all about slopes, at least as we're going in this direction from position to velocity, from velocity onto acceleration. So, you know, hopefully you are good with uh, slopes in here. So now what can happen actually, you know, and I want to try to give you, I was thinking about this, I want to be able to give you kind of all the cases to think about. Well, so I'm going to just focus in on the position um, time graph. So number one, okay, the first thing that can happen is that we have no motion, right? So you have no motion at all. So how does that work when you have no motion? That means you're standing in one particular spot. So, you know, where can that spot be? Well, if you're starting from your reference point, you know, then you're gonna be kind of standing in here and as time continues, you're basically stuck at zero, right? So that is no motion, you're just stuck there, okay? And you're stuck at your reference point of zero. The other thing that can happen is, you know, maybe you have some positive initial position and that positive initial position with respect to the reference, so whatever that might be, maybe you know you set it as east, west, whatever it is, I didn't put it on this graph, but that position is positive with respect to your reference, and this would designate that, again, you have no motion at all, you're just stuck in that position. And of course, you can also be okay, on the negative side of your reference point, Okay, and it would again just be a straight line okay, that you would have in here. So that's no position. So those are the three things. You're stuck at your reference point, you're at a positive okay, value, or you're at a negative value. Now in all of these cases, if there is no motion, um, what does that mean with respect to our velocity time graphs? Well, if Indeed, okay, even intuition tells you if you're not moving anything, well, you're not going to have a velocity and you certainly will not have an acceleration, which is kind of some kind of a speeding up or slowing down in one dimension. So what that would mean is that your graph would automatically basically be just a flat line for both of these, no matter where it is. So if this is at zero, if it's positive or if it's on the negative side anywhere along the way, that would give us a velocity and acceleration of zero, right? So that's case number one. That's kind of the simplest case that we would have in here. And now the second case, let me get rid of these, okay, for the moment. So the second case that you have with respect to these graphs, now you do have motion, all right? But what you do have is, you know, you have uniform velocity. So what does that mean, uniform velocity? It means that your velocity is constant, right? So this is what will happen. So your velocity is constant. Um, that means that it's the same, right? So it's not changing. Um, and, you know, it's a constant. So there is some kind of motion. Well, in this case, well, then, then what can actually happen? Well, you could possibly be moving, right? So if it's constant, 
you would be moving in that case because you have a constant speed okay, or constant velocity you're moving in the positive direction so it would be kind of some kind of a positive slope so it's going to be looking like this and if that's the case then you would have a positive slope and so your actual velocity would be constant it would be just a flat line again because we're looking at the slope so it's the rise over the run it's a straight line so we have a flat line on velocity now it's on the positive side on the acceleration because acceleration is how your velocity is changing well if it's uniform if it's not changing it's flat and again looking at the slope it's flat which means you know that this thing is actually zero right so that's what we would have now you can of course be moving okay and in this case maybe you are moving in the opposite direction with respect to your reference and maybe your slope is negative okay so in this case you know it could be negative now this will depend on where you're starting from so notice that on my position time graph what i have is in this case i am starting from zero it doesn't have to start from zero it can start from some other spot but in all of these cases right no matter where you put this okay it's going to be a negative slope and it's a constant velocity and you can calculate that slope with finding rise over run well in this case you know it's not going to be positive it's going to be somewhere negative depending on how steep that slope is your acceleration on the other hand is still going to be a flat line it's just still going to be zero because you're not speeding up you're not slowing down in this case so that's kind of the second thing that can happen you can either have a positive or you can have a negative slope and all that means if it's positive you're you know speeding up in the direction of your reference positive side if it's negative well you know you are sorry speeding up you are moving okay in the positive direction at a uniform constant velocity and if it's negative then you're moving in the opposite way okay and it has a, a negative velocity where the negative just means with respect to the reference so that is motion but uniform okay velocity and that means your acceleration is still all stuck at zero okay so let me remove this okay so now we have those cases um, settled right as we're going through the last case that can happen this is the third case and this is the hardest case to deal with because there's quite a few things that are happening so you are in motion and you have a uniform acceleration and in physics in the introductory physics this is really as far as you go in the first initial stages uniform acceleration means that your acceleration is constant so what does that mean okay for us it means that you i are you are either speeding up okay or you are possibly slowing down so this is slowing down right so this is what will happen now in these instances what does that mean for our position okay time graph like what does it mean okay and what can actually happen in here well what can happen in here so as you're kind of moving along okay with respect to your speed so maybe i'll draw this um, out Okay, let's you know keep it in green i guess okay or maybe let's keep it in highlight form so speeding up means okay so you would have kind of this movement you would have a curve okay as you're going along um, and now notice that you are moving so in your position it looks like you are you know moving along okay as time continues on and you are moving in the positive direction right it's on the positive side in here now of course again it will depend on the reference so this is starting from zero but you can start from anywhere right so no matter where you start okay so this would be on the negative side with respect to your reference okay and then you know you're still speeding up so all of these are the same just your starting point changes right so with this what does this mean for us well again so looking at the slopes as you're going along so the slopes themselves well in here you know the slope would be flat so you so like you're starting from zero over here 
Okay, and then now you're noticing that, well, you are picking up a slope, you know, you're picking up a slope and then you're going all the way through and you're trying to figure out, okay, so what is that particular slope, right? So you notice that they are moving along. Now, because in introductory physics, you're studying just linear motion, um, the actual uh, slope of this, okay, that you have, it is nicely going to uniformly kind of be a change, right? So this is because it's uniform acceleration. So it looks like it's some kind of a speeding up, right? Moving in that particular direction that you're moving. And the way that you would draw this out, okay? So again, this will be from starting at zero. And because now it's positive, so this is going to be looking, okay, for the same amount, so for the same duration of time, you know, your actual velocity is going up. So there is a slope now on the velocity that you have. So that's how it would look like, okay, if you were transitioning in, and that's just looking at instantaneous velocities at each point. And really, now, sometimes in this case, students freak out because they want to know, you know, okay, well, this one is easy, so this one would have been zero, but, you know, how about all of these points? Like, how do I know? But please don't forget that you really only just need two points and really you just need your initial point and your final point. So you need to just check two tangent lines. You need to check your tangent line at your start and then your tangent line at the end and calculate the slope from there. That goes back to that video on instantaneous velocity. Once you have that, so once we have these two, we can graph them. So we can put it one here and then one here and then we can join it you know, with a line right there because we know that it has uniform acceleration. So that's what happens there. Now, if you were transitioning this back in, so if you were going from here to here to acceleration, well, from velocity to acceleration, again, you're looking at the slope. And if you look at the slope, it's a straight line. So you can find the rise and the run, and it will be just a constant and notice that it's positive. So in this case, you know, this is going to be somewhere over here, but it's going to be positive for that duration. And that's the transition between one and another graph in here. So that's on the positive side. All right. So this is kind of speeding up in the positive direction of your reference. Now, what about, okay, if you are still moving in the positive direction, but now you're slowing down. So how does that look like? So again, it just depends from where you're starting from, but this is going to be a curve like this, okay? So in here, this particular curve, again, doesn't matter where it starts from, but it's going to look always the same. Notice that you're moving in the positive direction with respect to your reference. Positive in this case is up, okay, in here. And once again, you're looking at the slopes. So now notice your biggest slope is at the start, okay, and then it starts to die off and then eventually looks like it's basically flat at zero. So what does this mean for us? Well, you know, you are still moving. So notice you're moving in the positive direction in here, but it looks like you are slowing down. Remember instantaneous velocity. So you're slowing down. So what does that look like? And in here, it looks like it has the steepest slope and it's positive. So it's going to be somewhere over here starting and then it's slowing down in here, basically almost to a zero. Okay. Right there or zero, depending on what it is. So your start is here and then your end is going to be somewhere over there. So what it's going to look like, it's going to look like this, right? Again, depending okay, of, you know, with respect to that tangent line that you have. So notice now it has a negative slope in here. And negative slope, well, if you were going to your acceleration, well, if you find it, want to go from here to here, then this is going to be, okay, a line on the negative side. So this is what it means. And this would mean you are actually slowing down, right? You're moving in the positive direction. Your velocities, instantaneous velocities are all positive until, you know, you come basically to a stop. So they're still all positive. So you're moving in that positive direction, but your acceleration is opposing it. And when it opposes your motion, that means you're slowing down. So that would have been this case right there. Now, these two were in the positive direction. But what if you're moving in the opposite direction? Because in the opposite direction, your values would have been negative. So in here, so if I remove all of this, and now I start moving in the, uh, in the other side, okay, 
So in this way, we can still speed up, right? Now, how would that look like? Well, it's gonna look like something like this. Now, your curve is gonna look like this. And again, if you're thinking of instantaneous velocities, so you have your instantaneous velocities, which you can do your tangent lines and think about the slope. And the slope, it looks like it's getting steeper and steeper, but it's more and more negative, right, in this case. So it looks like it's kind of started from zero, okay, and then it goes negative, negative, more negative. So what does that mean, right? So as you're kind of heading along, okay, so it gets more and more negative in this way. So if you are going to be going in that particular direction, okay, as you're going through, so it starts from zero, and then it becomes more and more negative. So this is going to slip out, okay, in this way, okay. And so that slope, okay, is negative and it's getting more negative, okay, as you're moving along. But keep in mind, you're moving in the opposite direction. So you are speeding up. So this is very counterintuitive sometimes for students. So you can think about, okay, I'm moving in this direction, right? So my velocity, right, is speeding up in this direction, okay? And if I calculate the slope, okay, the slope here is going to be negative still, right? Because it's the negative slope, so from here, so the rise over run, which is the, really the fall, okay, over the run over here, that comes from the slope, and it's still negative. And you might get fooled, and you might think, oh, you're slowing down. No, 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 no. Okay, slowing down, okay, only happens when your velocity, okay, and your acceleration have different signs, okay, in terms of the motion that they have. So before, when we were going, okay, with a positive slope, that means in this particular case, you know, so if it was some kind of a, a, a positive slope so, or, or a negative slope on that case, you have to look where you are with respect to your velocities. So if you know, if you're moving over here, right, and you're on, on this side, your velocity is positive. Okay, well then in that case, you know, acceleration is in the opposite. But here, okay, notice your velocities are negative, right? So they're always consistently going in the opposite direction in here. And therefore you are speeding up. And the speeding up means that your velocity and your acceleration have the same sign, right? So that's what happens there. Okay, so now what about slowing down in this direction? Okay, so how does that look like? So that looks like it's going to be going, okay, kind of like this, okay, where you're going in this direction <clears throat> in here. And again, so this, depending on where it starts, okay, it can be anywhere, okay, within here. So if you have this looking like that, then, and you're looking at the instantaneous velocity so you're looking at the slopes okay so notice that in here okay so the slopes it looks like it's very steep negative and then it gets less negative less negative okay and then goes to zero so that means you're starting off from a negative side and then it gets less negative less negative and so on so this looks like it's okay in this particular okay um, direction right it never turns positive notice that it's always negative in terms of its slope Okay, so that's what we have. But now as you transition from velocity to acceleration, as you're looking at the slope, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute, this is a positive slope, right? So the rise is positive, the run is positive. So this actually looks, okay, like it's a positive slope. And again, if your velocity has a different sign, okay, then your acceleration, so velocities here are negative, okay, acceleration here is positive because this is a positive slope that means this is slowing down but it's slowing down in the opposite direction so what it's doing is it's moving in this way but it's slowing down in this particular direction so those are all the instances that you can run into and i hope that you you know find this useful so you have no motion at all very simple to comprehend you have motion where you have just straight lines on the position and then the velocity really is either positive or negative. And then you have this most complicated case where you are either speeding up in the positive direction or slowing down in the positive direction or you know, you're speeding up in the negative direction or slowing down in the negative direction. And you can then graph those along. So understanding this is super crucial. Now, here's an example 
that I want to give to you. Okay, so let's imagine that we have this. And actually now I gave you all the numbers associated with this concept as well, right? So as you're going along, you know, you we can actually calculate these things. And I wanted to give this to you so you can have a, a nice solid example in here. So the first thing that you should notice, okay, so in here, um, without any thought, okay, just by the explanation, you should know what is happening at each leg over here. So I'm going to highlight these in different colors, okay? So you have one leg here, you have another leg over here, okay? You have another leg over here, and then you have a final leg, okay? And this final leg is over here. Now, based on this, you know, what what is actually happening in here, okay? So notice that if I look at this, so at this point number one, if you just had to figure out in terms of velocities, accelerations, what's happening, well, here I can see, you know, if I look at the tangent lines right there, notice that they're changing, okay, and it's very steep positive, and then it basically goes to zero there. So I can find out and I know that, oh, hold on a second, okay, so that has a positive and then it goes to zero. So I know how that will look like, okay, for me. So that's going to look like something like this. Okay, on the velocity side, right? So this is going to be a negative slope on the velocity side. On the acceleration side, it's going to be just a negative. So this is uniform. And what this means, okay, so in here, it means I'm slowing down. So I'm going from zero. It looks like it's meters. I'm going north. And then I'm slowing down as I get to 30. And then I basically stop. Okay, and then over here, um, during this piece, notice I'm not moving anywhere. I'm stuck at 30. So here, there is no velocity, so this is the no motion case, and there's no acceleration. And then all of a sudden, okay, so notice that I start to, okay, as I'm going along, right, I really pick up my speed, right, so I start off and I take off, okay, but then I start to slow down, right, okay, as I'm going along. And now notice that it's now negative slope, so this is a negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, and this looks like it goes back to zero over there. So these are negative slopes, okay, as I'm coming along, okay, and then heading back to zero. So this is going to be looking a little weird, but it goes from negative, okay, all the way to zero. So it's going to look kind of something like that. And then I have a, a straight line, okay, on the position, right? So then I have a, a straight line. It's almost like I'm going to go at a uniform constant velocity. Notice it's positive in that case. So that would have been a positive line on the velocity, Okay, that I would have in there. So let's break these down and see if we can calculate all of them within here. So I'm going to borrow this, okay, and duplicate it. So I'm going to draw all the graphs for us. All right, so here it is, okay. So what I'm doing is I have a position time graph. I want to create a velocity time graph and an acceleration time graph. So how do I do that with the given pieces of information? So we're going to have to try to kind of approximate certain things. Some things are going to be rather easy and simple for us to do, but the curvatures that we have, those ones we need the tangent lines and you know, those ones kind of suck. So let's take a look and see, okay, what happens. Um, so whenever you have this curvature, you know, once you realize, okay, what these actual, so this is, we're going to have a tangent line here and let me actually draw one. Okay. So within here, so I'm going to draw a tangent line at that point, hopefully. Okay. Let's see. So this is kind of a, a tangent line that I'll have. Okay. There you go. So that's not a nice tangent. Okay. To that curve. Now, so from this tangent, what this will mean is I have to find the rise over run, okay? So if I'm going to be finding the rise over run, so this is my rise, okay, over here, and this is my run over there. And now for those, so that rise over run, let me do that just above. Um, so now it looks like it, it's going up by tens over here. So since I put this point over here, uh, this is going to be 40, right? So it looks like it has risen 40. Okay, so this is 40 up, 40 meters up, and 10 seconds across. So what that would mean is my, my slope, okay, I'll call this, you know, slope one. 
So this is going to be 40 over 10, which is really just four meters per second. Notice it's positive, okay, on that side. Okay, so this is what I would have. So now on that side, it's going to be four meters per second. Now, what I need over here, so I need, okay, the next one. Now you might think, oh, you know, I'm going to need this and this and this. No, because again, remember from here, so as we were doing these, you really just need two points, the starting point and the ending point, and then you can connect it with a straight line on the velocity time graph. So on the next one, this one is simple, right? So this one just kind of flats out. So this is basically zero right here. So that's the slope. So it goes from four meters per second, okay, to zero. Now I don't know, okay, so within here, um, you know, how can I label these, okay, you notice I didn't label the axes yet, okay, in here, okay, so what's convenient in here, um, that's fine, you know what, I'm going to go up by two, so this is two meters per second, this is four meters per second, six meters per second, let's make this negative two, negative four, negative six, and hopefully my lines will fit, otherwise you can adjust the scales, so I'm going from four meters per second, right, so this is from this point over here, and I'm, I'm going to go get stuck at zero. And this is at the last point, my instantaneous velocity. So as you're graphing this, there you go. And here is your line. So that is the first transition just by using the tangent lines. Now from here, if you want to know your acceleration, so as you're going now from here to here, well, that's not going to be that bad because finding the slope, it will be negative, right? So finding this, maybe I'll change the color. So this is now going to be a fall, right? So this goes falls down, okay? And then this runs for 20, okay, in here. So that's what I have there as I'm going along. So with that, okay, so the fall is, okay, so this is fall, so it's minus four, okay? So this is going to be negative four meters per second, okay? Notice because it goes down. And then the run, okay, right there is 20. This is going to be seconds over here. So it's going to be negative four over 20. And I'm sorry, I'm blanking out here. So four divided by 20, 0 0.2. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.2 um, in terms of my slopes. Okay, so, um, and it's negative, right? So this is negative because of that. So um, I don't know, I'm going to, again, I'm going to guess here. And hopefully this works out for me. Okay, so this is going to be, now notice this is now in meters per second squared. Okay, so this is what I have. And then this is going to be 0 0.1, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So if I do that, uh, it was 0 0.2. So this is going to be like so, right? So this is my, okay, so these are the points, okay, over here. And now I have a flat line on the acceleration. So this is uniform acceleration. Now it's negative. Okay, and it means, and notice my velocities were positive, okay, in this case. So they were all positive in here. This is negative. So indeed, it makes sense that this particular object is slowing down. So that's part one. Part two, the green one. Okay, this one is much easier. Okay, it's simpler for us. We go back to green here. The slope for this, right? Okay, so if this is, you know, slope number two over here. That's just zero. It's a flat line. So whenever it's a flat line, it's zero. There's no motion. Well, what is what would that mean? Well, zero. Okay. So within here, so I'm basically now going over here. Okay, and I'm stuck. Okay, I'm stuck at zero. Okay, over there. So that's my um, velocity. Okay, so that I have. Okay, and with that, well, for my acceleration. So as I go in here, so that means my acceleration. Okay, as I'm moving along is also going to be zero. So now you have to be careful how you draw this. <clears throat> so I'm going to put, notice I put an open dot in here because I have a closed dot over here and you can't have two different acceleration at the same point in time, right? So, you know, we typically draw when we do this, okay? You know, once you start studying, okay, some functions, okay, and domains, you will notice that, you know, this is, Okay, basically one point and this, it can't be at the same point because that would mean that you have two accelerations that are different. Okay, so that is zero right there. So that's my second slope. 
All right, now my third one in here. So now that's this particular line. So that's gonna be my third slope over there. So M3, okay, so you know, what will I have? Now again, I have to be careful. So now, I mean, it looks, it doesn't really look realistic because it looks like, you know, we're going from a, a, a zero velocity now to all of a sudden, okay, going back in the opposite direction, okay, almost instantaneously, but in any case, so this is what happens there. Notice that these are all negative, except this one is zero. So that's pretty good because what this is telling me um, is at that point, I know my velocity is gonna be zero, okay, over here, okay? And that is coming from here because this looks like it's a flat line. Now I'm, I'm approximating these, of course. So that is stuck at zero, but now I need to know this one. So let me draw a tangent line. Now the way that you know, I draw the tangent lines, I'll try to take the point, and then I do the best I can, okay, so in here, okay, as I'm going through, all right, so there you go, that's a pretty decent one, now it's, I'm aligning it to the grid, of course, sometimes it may not align, and you have to guess, but that's kind of the tangent line at that point, point. Um, and it looks like it's, you know, relatively steep here, okay, but so be it, so, you know, what is that, well, so it's a fall, Okay, so notice it's negative, okay, in here, and then it goes, okay, not very far over here, so five seconds in this direction. So a fall, it went from 30 right there, so that's the actual, so I'm counting, so from here to here, so that's 30 meters, so that's my fall, but it's negative. And then I have, so this is five seconds, okay, and that five seconds, so that's from here to here, that's five seconds over there, so that's the run. So, well, 30 divided by five, at least this one I, I do know. <laughs> okay, so we have a negative six meters per second over here. So that's my starting point. So it's not very realistic, but in any case, okay, so notice that it starts off, okay, so somewhere over here. Now, if we want, so you can open, you can do it. If you do a closed dot over here, right? So, and then at this point, open dot, unless you wanna switch them up, now this is gonna be a little tricky for me to do, but let's see if I can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna open dot here. Okay, so that means, you know, so this is open, and if I close the dot over here, it means that, you know, we just jumped magically, okay, to negative six. And notice the negative six velocity over here. Okay, and then as we're going along, so my velocities are negative, right? So they're continuously negative, okay, in there. So this is, you know, it's negative this way, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, but it goes to zero. So notice these are all negative values in here. Now negative values because I'm looking over here and then it gets to zero. So this is kind of how the graph looks like, okay, at this particular point. And then finally, okay, as you're gonna be going in there, so then it goes, you know, through zero, okay, over there. And, you know, let me kind of go through here. And again, I'm gonna just kind of leave this as a open spot. So that means at that particular point, okay, it gets to zero, but now I'm gonna calculate my final one. Now, from here to here, okay, as you're calculating this, again, you need a slope. Now this has a positive slope for us, Right, so you know, from here to here, so this is my run, this is my rise. So, as you're calculating this slope, notice it goes from negative six to zero, so it's positive six, right? So, there's going to be six meters per second going up, okay, divided by you know how much time has elapsed. So, it went from 30 to I guess this is 40, 45, okay, so that's going to be 15 seconds. So whatever that might be, let's take a look. Six divided by 15, so 0 0.4. Yes, of course, I should have known that. So this is 0 0.4, but it's positive, right? So this is a positive value, okay, in here. That's the slope. Now, um, so what that would mean, if I was drawing this out, so positive, so notice 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, so I'm actually kind of missing it, okay? So it's gonna be there. So that will be, okay, right there. So this is, okay, open spot, okay, right there, and a closed, okay, dot. So again, because I closed it over here, 
Okay, I'll leave it open over here. And you, or you do vice versa, okay, within there. So just make sure that you can't be on two different accelerations at the same time. So that's how this one looks like. And now here's the last one. So this one, thank goodness, we don't need any tangent lines. So this last one, maybe I'll do it in pink. So here's your, notice it's a straight line, right? So you're going up, so you're going north, right? So you're gonna go rise over run. So within here, so as you're rising over running, so from this point, you know, all the way up to this point, so from here to here, it's going from 10 to 30, so that's 20 meters positive. And then your run, so this is from this point to this point, Notice this is 40, this is 45, 50, 55, you know, 60. So it looks like this is 15 seconds, right? So this is 15 seconds over here. So it looks like it's gonna be one over three, three, I think something so on. Um, so 20 divided by 15, which is four over three. So 1.33, etc. Okay, so that was 15 seconds. So that means, now that is a constant, right? That's uniform constant velocity as you're going through. So if I'm drawing this out, so one, three, three, so notice I have two over here. So, you know, one, three, three is gonna be somewhere over there. So that's gonna be my last one. Um, so I'm gonna just draw it. Okay, so let's put a point there. This is kind of flat, okay, as you're going along. That goes all the way to 60 right there, but it's a positive slope. That's your velocity. Now. From your velocity, well, if you have just uniform constant velocity, that means that there's no acceleration. So over here, you're now stuck back in, okay? So from here to here, you're basically stuck at zero acceleration right there. So there you have it. So this is a really nice example to force you to understand these position time graphs and then what to do about them if you wanted to graph them. As you can see, you know, this video is rather long and my apologies, but I hope that it gives you a full essence of what happens in these graphs of linear motion in one dimension. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.